So it's very common with drain clearing to come along and clear out the whole stretch. And what that does is it denudes the plants and the insects and the potential for filtration. So what I'm doing here is just a really, really simple measure. Literally just digging a bit of a, digging a bit of a pool above a dam and then building a small dam at the bottom of it. And that's designed then to hold the water. So I build this up in layers and just dance up and down on it every so often just to really puddle it in well. <coughs> so, so what I'm trying to do here is to create a nice, a nice good solid impermeable dam out of the clay. And we're lucky here because we've got good heavy marley clay, good heavy stable stuff. So I'm just working back up along and adding to the dam every, with every shovelful. And then by the time I'm finished then the plan will be to have a, <coughs> a good impermeable dam and the plan will be to have a good impermeable dam that will hold water back behind it, create a series of little pools. And like with all the other measures on the farm, it's to hold on to the water, let the silt settle out, give space for plants to grow, they'll take up the nutrients. So there's a whole range of benefits that ensue from all of these small measures. And you can see they're not big, you know, they're not big steps. They're all really simple things that can be done. And I suppose if I was here standing beside the JCB, I'd just get him to leave a chunk every so often, and that would do a similar job. But in the absence of that, I'm just repairing some of this to, to get a bit of a dam in place. There's a bit of a, a reed sweet grass or something along that lines growing just there. Could even be rye grass or something. But any vegetation like that will all help. So I'm working around that a little bit. And I put the odd stone below it just to act as a bit of a, a bit of a buffer, just to cake it on. I don't know how much of a difference the stone will make. The main thing is to hold back the water. Now I know that James tells me that this gets much, much swifter in the winter, and I've only ever seen it in the summer. So, so we, you know, it remains to be seen what will be here if I come back again in a year's time, or whether this will still be here but it's quite low and it's quite solid, so it might be fine, might hold. And once the plants begin to get established, that makes a big difference to it. And that helps everything to knit into place and the roots begin to hold it. Then we've got a little bit of grass on that side and that'll all help. So I'll put that uppermost in the middle. There we go. You can't see it, but the grass leaves will hold. What I want to do is make sure that the water is coming down in the middle so that it doesn't erode the sides. Okay, there we go. I think that's pretty much, pretty much it. And if you want to rotate around, there's another one just below you that I prepared earlier. And, and that's beginning to hold water now. You can just see little bits of water beginning to pull behind it. And again, you can see the bit of a dip in the middle. So the dip, oops, a dip in the center before it flows on. So in a drain with this gradient, Ideally, they'd be maybe five meters apart, quite close together. But if you've got a very level drain, you could literally just afford to have one at the end or maybe one in the middle. So it depends on the gradient. Ideally, what you'd have is the water, the water going over the toe of this dam would touch the toe, sorry, over the top of this dam would touch the toe of the next dam up so that you'd have standing water all the way back up along the drain. And so that's something you can do with the maintenance regime if, it, um, if it's at the point where you've got a digger and you're cleaning it out. That's one of the measures that can be taken. Oh, I'm winded after that digging. Okay. Mm.